Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with the damn lurgy. Yes, I've been a bit flued up and so I'm a bit, a bit nasal in this video. Apologies for that guys, but we've got terrain to do so we better get cracked on. So what are we working on? Well, this is part three of our end of level boss for the Battlefield Basic series for our Let's Make series. Uh, and we're working on our trench lines. So if we take a look at them, you can see them in all their glory here and they are looking nice. Now, I did sort of, when I started this project, the idea was it was only going to be a two video project. This is already the third video. What happened was I was going to do a video, one video on the building techniques and one video on painting and flocking and that sort of stuff. And then I took it on as an end of level boss and I started throwing new things in and different challenges and that sort of stuff. And obviously, the project's expanded a little. And that's what this video is about, the last of the challenges, because I've reached out to you guys and you've asked for duck boards, you've asked for muddy puddles in the bottom of the trenches, bridges over the trenches, saps, ladders, and various other little eye bits and eye candy. So that's where I'm gonna get stuck in with, with the aim by the end of this week to have it all textured up, all detailed up, and ready for painting next week. So that's the battle plan. Now, if I bring you down, one of the main jobs that we've got to do is, do you remember when I was talking about this trench line? Yeah, uh, and I said I don't really like the fire step how, how it is. Yeah, on the basis that it is just continuous. So my first job is I need to start breaking things up. So I'm going to break the fire steps up to make room for ladders, to make room for saps. I also need to prep a place for a, what do you call it? for a uh, bridge across the trench there. And we've got to sort out a bit more sanding in the actual bottom of the trenches so we can put our muddy puddles in. So with that in mind, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Cracking on time. Right, Rudolph here has been cracking on and I'm making good progress. Yeah, the sniffles. Right, okay, come on down. Right, as you can see, yeah, there's a bit of blue there. Now what we've done is I've gone in with my long blade, I've removed the fire step, sanded it down, yeah, just to get it sort of level. And then I've gone in and I've put a full length piece of our corrugated card in and a couple of wooden stakes. We used exactly the same techniques as we did on the trench wall, okay? So there's nothing really to show you. Other than perhaps a little bit of what you call it, a little bit of, let me bring that up, yeah, so you can see. You can see I've put the corrugated cardboard on the sides as well, just to cover up the sides. Now, I've not just only done that. Uh, which one? This one. Okay, what else have I got to do? Well, straight off you can see a walking great hole in that base, and it's quite pronounced. Okay, this is for the muddy puddles. Now, I don't expect the puddle to be this deep. I'm gonna go in and I need to relayer it with some DAS modeling putty, and I've gotta put some texturing on it afterwards anyway. Yeah, so I needed it quite deep. So I dug it out with some simple, what you call it, some simple 60 grit paper. Now, on top of that, you can see we've got another one of our sections here, and these are gonna be for the ladders for going over the top. Yeah, but over here, yeah, you'll see we've got a slightly larger section. Now in this case, I've come in, I've cut it out, and then I've gone in with my blade and I've essentially cut straight lines. I've then used the, the tip of a ruler and dug it out. That's gonna be a sap. Now if you don't know what a sap is, a sap is an underground tunnel that leads to a forward point. Now it could be an observation point, it could be a, a dummy bunker or something like that, but basically they were quite common in the trenches. So it sort of occurred to me that, well, it's quite possible, you know, not only to sort of like go to the observation point via the sap, but if the enemy discovers the observation point, they could come in via the sap. So they're alternative entries onto the board, you know, so my troops have broken through here. So I've got one on here and one on one of the curved bits over here. And the idea being is depending on how they're laid out modularly, either they'll be at the end of the board or there'll be one on the edge and one roughly center. Yeah, so there's a bit of play functionality wise there. Final thing is, sorry for the sniffles, 
Yeah, you can see I've just cut out a little wedge from either side of there, and that's where our, our sort of platform's gonna go across our bridge. Okay, so my next job is, uh, I need to prepare, what you call it, my saps. Yeah, so I'll come back once I've got my saps done. Right, that's most of the construction elements of the changes I wanted to do done. If you come on down, let me show you. So obviously, yeah, we've done our ports for our ladders, which are there using exactly the same techniques. If I bring it across, yeah, you can see our sap there. And it is hollow, or it goes in about an inch. Yeah, and I'll be able to cover that up and that sort of stuff, but that's the entrance to our underground tunnel. Now on top of that, our uh, request went out for a bridge, so if I can get it on the camera right, there you go, there's your bridge. Now all of these things have been put in, but they need blending in with the rest of the scenery, the bridge, the saps, the flooring as well, and that means DAS modelling putty, that's my plan. But I can't use that until my PVA is dry, because what I don't want to do is go in with a bit of water and DAS and start messing around, start moving things. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to dry, and then when it's dry, we'll DAS it up, and then we're on to the texturing. So, feeling a bit better back in the studio and everything is dry now. So, if you'd like to join me at the desk, yeah, as you can see, all our bits are on. And I'm only going to show you this one because it's duplicated on the others. So, we'll just go through this one. Right, uh, so, we've got our, watch out, our bridge here. That's gone down in firm. Yeah, we've got our ladder spots and we've got our saps. Now, you will notice that if I bring them up, yeah, that, we've got a few holes here, we've got a hole here, we've got a gap here. These need to be filled, okay? But it's not just them. We've also got gaps along here with our bridges. We're gonna have gaps along here, okay? In these sort of where the uh, corrugated iron goes up, but the, the polystyrene dips down behind it. And so we need to fill those. Now, I'm not gonna use filler, because one, my filler is getting low, and two, I need to do something, I need something a bit bulkier. Filler can be a bit sloppy at these sort of jobs. Yeah, so my product of choice is the old Daz again. And if I come along and sort of give you an idea of what I'm going to do, let me set this up. Okay, so we've got our sort of dugout trench. Now, this is gonna be where the water effects and our muddy, muds, puddles sort of stuff goes, as requested by you guys. Now, it is quite deep at the minute, yeah? Normally, I would have included these at the sculpting stage, but it was only after we'd actually textured it that you guys said, can we have some puddles and some planks, Mel? So, all right then, back to it. Yeah, and so I've dug it out quite deep. Now, the reason for that is because I'm gonna pad it back out with my Daz, okay? This is Daz air drying clay. The trick to putting Daz down, yeah, just like I showed you in the last video, is to put water down. The water melts the sort of Daz, it's clay at the end of the day. It lets it soak through underneath and then reform and dry and grip. So, the water's down, yeah, I get a little bit, I just push it in, and as you can see, yeah, I'm getting a perfectly smooth bottom. Yeah, and who doesn't love a smooth bottom? Right, my job is, I've got to crack on with filling these, I've got to go along, fill some gaps, fill some behind the steps, and I'll bring it back when I'm done, yeah? Got most of the dazzing done, but wanted to show you a quick tip. Come on down. Right, what I'm in the process of doing is I'm filling in the gaps, yeah, between this these points, yeah, and in between here. Now, I could use filler for this or I could pack it with polystyrene, but polystyrene, I'd only have to go over with filler afterwards and filler itself. When you're packing large gaps with filler, you have to sort of really pack it, use it dry out, and it's quite delicate, these areas. So, there's a different technique. Yeah, and this involves using Daz modeling putty. Now this is Daz modeling putty, all I've done 
is I've given it a little bit of a roll so it's a bit like a wormy worm. Yeah, a little bit of water in my tub down here and then what I'm gonna do, is just put some water over these areas. Water helps the Daz bond in. Next trick, just simply come along, okay, and lay your worm into the gap and then you can smooth it in as you go. And then clean it off. And so if I bring that up for you, there you go. Do you see how that's gone in? Straight over, it's absolutely perfect. It's really easy to do, it's not fiddly, it's not messy. Daz is a clay, so it goes where you push it. Unlike filler and that sort of stuff, which can splatter around, get caught on things, Daz won't get caught on stuff and, and you know, that sort of stuff. So it's great for filling little gaps and that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna get cracked on with my gap filling. See you in a sec, guys. So all the das is in and the gaps are filled. And if you come down, yeah, you can see on here that I filled in all these gaps. Yeah, I filled in our big trench. That's still wet. Now, to be truthful, I really should wait until it's dry before I continue, but I know I'm gonna be fine from experience, so I'm just gonna crack on. Yeah, on top of that, we've blended in the bridge, blended in all these gaps. Yeah, I missed that one. I'll have to do that one, right? Uh, I'll do that now. There we go, all fixed. Only took a second. Right, my next job is I need to start doing the planking. Now I have been thinking, I don't want to plank it all the way up or all the way along. It'll be a long job and it doesn't really need it. Okay, what we do need though, is where we've got these impressions that we've put in, we do need to put plank in there because that's where we're gonna put our water. And so what I've got over here is my standard strips of uh, balsa wood. I've gone over them with a wire brush to get some texture on them, and then I've cut them out, and we've basically got all of those. Now I'm gonna use these to lay across, yeah, the trench line, i.e. I'm gonna go the same sort of orientation as I've gone with the fire step. It would be easier to do them lengthways, to be perfectly honest, but, what I want to do and try and achieve with this, yeah, they really need to go perpendicular to the trench wall. And on top of that, that's how they were done in the trenches. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I've seen photos and that's how they were done. Now, it's not just a matter of gluing some boards down. I want to start texturing it up as well. And so with that in mind, yeah, it's recipe time. We're gonna make some terrain group gloop. So what I've got here is I've got some filler. It's a spare tub, I just need to use it, and I might as well use it on this. I've got some grit, very fine, sharp sand, PVA, and some paint. And I'm just gonna mix these together, yeah, to make a bit of a slurry that I can use to put down in the corners and around places and all that sort of stuff. So, is there much in here? Ooh, there's not much in there, is there? We should be okay, but if I have any problems, I've got some Artex down there I wanted to mess around with, so I can use that as well. So let's get this in there. So that's all our filler in. It's a little bit dried out, but we should be fine. Yeah, let's throw a bit of PVA in there. Take the lid off. Good squirt. PVA just helps it all bond together. Now, we need to thin it down a bit. Yeah, and so we're onto the paint. Yeah, and the trick is to thin it down enough that when you add the grit, it thickens up but still stay, stays a slurry. So, grab the paint. One, two, two should be enough. And then what I've got to start to do is I've got to mix all this in and see if I can get a smooth paste out of it. So, I'll see you in a sec, guys. Right, our slurry is pretty much, well, there you go. Yeah, it's a little bit bitty, but that'll be perfectly fine. Now the next job is grit. Now you don't need that much grit in it, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I normally find enough to, to sort of coat the top is enough to do what you need to do for this sort of volume. Yeah, when it comes to the grit, always work on the basis of add a little, see how it goes, see if you need to add more. 
Yeah, it's a lot easier to add more grit than it is to take it away. In fact, you bloody can't take it away. Right, let's put a bit more in, and I think that'll be about it. And so there we are, and that's our consistency, yeah? If I bring the spoon up, you can see the texture on it. Yeah, if I show you in there, perfect, absolutely perfect. Now the next job that we need to do is get prepped to actually lay it down. So give me a second. All cleaned up and applying now. So I've got my sorry, slurry. Yeah, I've got a plastic spatula and I've got a hog's hair brush. And with this, this is what I'm doing. Okay, I'm pasting my slurry on and it is going down and I'm just basically manipulating it. I'm pushing it into the corners. I'm also putting it over the actual, uh, what do you call it, the, the craters. Yeah, it's important when you do this that after you've brushed it, you do go in and give it a bit of a stipple. Otherwise, you're gonna have stroke marks, which will be dead obvious, yeah, when you dry brush it up. So if I come along to here and very quickly sort of take you through what I'm doing, yeah, so there we have it. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll get a little bit of a blob. Yeah, drop it in the middle there. Yeah, work it round. And remember, this is about texturing it up. Yeah, don't try and, if it's getting a bit, if you need more on, just apply more. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, remember you can manipulate this stuff around and spread it about, and it will be go gone over with flock. So, yeah, the end result will look absolutely fine. And even if you go somewhere where you didn't mean to go, you're gonna be covering it anyway. So that's the battle plan with that. Now the next job is I've gotta basically do all of this. Yeah, with this, but at the same time, when I do these bits here, which is my soft clay, as I put it down, I'm also going to be embedding my planks into it. Yeah, so these will be going in onto that. I might even break a few so there's some bit below the water, but that's the job I've got to do. Yeah, I reckon about an hour's work, I reckon. Maybe, maybe a little longer, maybe a little less. We'll find out. Right, crack on time. Right guys, I'm working on texturing and I'm just doing a little bit that I wanna show you. Now one of the user requests was muddy puddles and, and duck boards. So what we've got there is some planking. Now, if you remember when we did this, what I did is I carved a chunk out of the polystyrene, I went in with my DAS modeling putty and then smoothed it all out, leaving basically a depression. The next thing that I've done is I've gone along and I've cut myself some duck boards. Now these were done in exactly the same way as our, what you call it as our fire step. I've then laid down our texturing mix, which I've already shown you, and then pressed our, our duck boards into it and just added a little at the edges to hold them down. Now, the important thing is if I bring this up, yeah, you will see there's a gap underneath it. That's because what we're going to do is we're going to fill that gap with water effects, yeah, which will give us water underneath the planking. It'll be a bit tricky, but we'll be saving that for the next video. Yeah, so you'll see that in that one. But let me quickly show you how I'm doing this. And it isn't hard at all. So if we come over here, yeah, we've got another one which I've just started here. Yeah, you can see the first plank in and that's where the crevice was. I've put a nice amount on. I've thinned it down at the bottom and I'm not really worried about the texture at the bottom because that's going to be covered with water effects. Yeah, at the side, I've left it nice and thick. The reason being is I need to get my planks. Yeah, and I need a decent amount at the side so I can stick my planks on it and they will soak in. When I stick my plants down, one of the things we're gonna do is press at the edges and sink them into the polystyrene a little. Yeah, it'll just help them all grip together and hold. So my next job is I need to continue with these, plank up these, and then I've just gotta go along a couple of little edges and a couple of little points and just add the texture into those. And once that's done, it'll be time to leave these to fully dry because there's quite a bit on here. Then we come back and it's time to start the sandbags. I'm not looking forward to that bit. Right, cracking on time. So all the texturing is done, and I'm just doing the last little touches up with the texturing or filling the gaps. Now you can see I've got the camera right here with me. That's because we're going close, so come on down. Yeah, now as you can see, yeah, I've sort of filled the gaps along here, 
Okay, now what I've done is I've come in with a very small brush and my watcher gloop, and I've just sort of stippled it down just to get a rough texture. But what I've got here is I've got my sharp sand. Now I'm not using any glue whatsoever. I'm just dropping it on, okay, and filling those gaps. The reason being is that when we come on and we put our paint and stuff on here, the paint will soak in and fix all this stuff down anyway. Yeah, and if I pour it in the gaps, yeah, as long as I don't turn this board upside down completely, yeah, the sand will stay in there, yeah, until it's been painted and all sealed. And once it has been painted, it'll be absolutely fine. But that's a really easy way, without messing around and without getting stuff all over your planks, of basically filling the gaps between them, okay? Because once we put our paint down, the paint will soak in, it'll fix it hard, and it'll be nice and solid for us. Now, this is pretty much all textured up. All that remains to do is sandbags, add barrels, ammo pouches, uh, periscopes, ladders, and all that sort of stuff, which is the next job. So, I'm gonna leave this to dry, and then once it's fully dry, we'll start final detailing. So all our gloop is now dry, and if you come down, you can see it's given us a lovely, muddy, really hard texture, which is exactly what we wanted from it, okay? Now, there's one thing I wanted to point out, because I, I know a load of you are gonna be going, well, what's with the gloop school? Why didn't you just put some PVA down and just throw some grit and gravel over it? Well, the, the thing is, with Watch Clip, the reason that I went for the gloop mix and I didn't do the PVA and grit is, as you can see, it's a long, longitudinal stroke straight across the piece. And if I'd gone for PVA with this, there'd be a risk of warping, whereas by using my sort of, my, my gloop mix, there's actually very little shrinkage in that, yeah? Which means that, I don't have to deal with any warping issues. So, we've got all this down. There is very little to do on this now. Uh, with regards to work-wise, we've got to add the sandbags, a couple of little ladders, and a few little barrels and stuff like that, final detailing. And I've just realized I've left the barrels at home, so, ah, I'm gonna be in tomorrow or over the weekend. Oh. Or I could add them just before I do the painting. We'll see. But the major jobby and the big jobby is sandbagging. Now, the astute of you will notice, yeah, I have an assistant in helping me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take you through how we're gonna do the sandbags. We've done plenty of sandbags before, okay, on the on the channel, so there's plenty of instructional videos. I'll just give you a quick overview, and then we'll come down and I'll show you what I'm doing on here, yeah? So, cracking on time, yeah? For the sandbags, I'm gonna be using Daz, as usual. Yeah, I've got some tape on my desk. I've got two lines there that are five millimeters apart. I've got two lines there that are eight millimeters apart, and they're divided up into 50 millimeter sections. And so what we're gonna do is roll this out until it's five mil. Once we've got our five mil, we place it on our eight mil and then just press it down until it fills those eight mil spots. And then we divide it up at the 50 mil di divides. And finally, we're left with that, which all we do is just tap in the edges to make it a nice round sandbag. Well, a little bit more sandbag-like. Right. Only got 300 or so of these to do. Crack on. So going through the long process of sandbagging it up, and if you take a look, it's looking rather nice. Yeah, now you can see straight away what I'm doing with the sandbags here is I'm starting off with a simple row that goes all the way along. Yeah, if I spin it round to this side, yeah, you can see where I started to sort of offset the sandbags, like they've fallen off. It, it helps break it up and make it look a little bit more, more realistic. Now, if I move it across a little bit further, you can see where we've got these piles of sandbags. 
Yeah. Now those piles are for the vision ports. Yeah. It may be a little bit excessive on the sandbags, not quite sure yet, but I quite like the look of it. And I've duplicated it on both sides. Yeah, so if I bring that down, it's all right. I'm trying not knacking me sandbags while I do it. Yeah, I've got them on both sides. So they're like sandbaggy mounds, yeah, with the planks and the, the sandbags across the top. Now I've done all of this, yeah. All I need to do is I need to come in and I just need to do this back row here and a couple of little odds and sods on it. And then at that point, all the sandbagging will be done, okay, which is almost pretty much finishes this project off. Now, to lay the sandbags down, it's dead simple. All I'm doing is I'm putting a blob of PVA down and then I'm putting the sandbags on top. So along the, the long line, I did a long line of PVA and just repetitively place them down. Then after that, I'm going in and just putting little various blobs down and popping them on. So, yeah, if I was to give you a quick example, yeah, it is just a simple matter of coming in, yeah, putting a bit of PVA down, getting you a couple of sandbags, yeah, it's always best to sort of align them sort of off each other. Yeah, so don't make them too regular. Yes, they would have been regular when they were built, but they would have been shelled, they would have got moved and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and to be truthful, the, the soldiers aren't going to climb out of the trenches to reorganize the sandbags at the top of the firing line. They're going to do the best they can from cover and leave the rest. So two have gone down. And then if I want to place on top, I need to put a bit of PVA on top to drop another sandbag on. Yeah. So once all these are done, okay, uh, the only thing I'll need to do then is to start putting the ladders on. Now there's a few places that need ladders to get about. And for that, what we've got is dead simple, uh, two barbecue skewers. Yeah, and then what we've done is we've split coffee stirrers in half and used those for the slats. And all we're going to do is trim them to the right length and glue them in place. Once everything is in place, yeah, all I'll do then is with the last of our textured mud, just blend some of the edges in so everything doesn't look like it's sitting on top of the mud, rather that, you know, it's sitting in the mud. So we've got a little bit of that left. We'll use that just to blend a couple of edges. Don't need to do it all, just a little. Yeah, and that should wrap it up. Right, I'll crack on. So all the sandbags are on and I put in the ladders. The, the grit's finally sealed. There's still a little bit of texturing, i.e. once everything's dry, going along with our, our little gloop, going into a few places and just adding a little to blend those features in with the ground. I've also got to add some barrels and satchels and binoculars and maybe a helmet on a stick and a few little details, yeah, but they are the really, really fine details. So we'll be doing that in the next video when at the same time, this is pretty much complete built wise from a terrain point of view. Okay, like I say, there's a couple of little touch ups, but you know, it's an hour or so's work. Uh, and so the next video will be on painting and flocking and adding all the foliage. And much like this video, that video is also going to be a little bit more in depth for the, taking like, the skills that we've learned in our let's makes and stepping it up to make it a little bit more real and a little bit more interesting. Now, if you want a quick look, come on down. You can see it in all its glory there. Yeah, you can try and guess the number of sandbags. We reckon about 400. Yeah, but overall it is looking beautiful. Yeah, everything's in place. And Mel is a happy chappy. So, uh, I'm gonna wrap this up now. So, Hope you've liked it. If you've got any questions, get them down below. I always answer my questions. If you've got any tips, get them down below as well. Although it might be a little bit late now, guys. Like it, share it. And as always, guys, yeah, if you look forward to this, these videos, if you enjoy them or they help you with your hobby, please consider supporting the channel. Either a one-off via PayPal down below or on the Patreon link in one of these corners. Yeah, just a dollar a month keeps the lights on the cameras rolling and it keeps me in here making this content for you okay so if you really like it guys 
please consider supporting it. And in the meantime, I'm going to get cracked on with painting it, and you'll be seeing me in an upcoming video real soon. All the best, yeah? Ta-da!